Hello everyone, I'm JoltKing627, and today we're going to be taking a look at my Direct Plunger Half-Length Quick 16. Let's get right into it. So, as you can see, this is the Dart Tag Quick 16, but now there is a Talon Mag permanently integrated into it. Just like it would stock, it simply loads from the top and holds about 18 rounds. Seems like a simple mod in theory, right? Well, in practice, not so much. Let's take a look at the internals so you can see what I mean. Okay, so on this side of the shell, we obviously have the Talon magazine that has been permanently integrated here by cutting off the feed lips, and it is screwed and glued directly into the shell, and there is a small piece here that helps feed darts in when you top load them. This is the piece that pushes your dart to the side, and as you can see, it has been modified. There is a plate of plastic here to get rid of the indent for where the large head of tagger darts would have been. Here is a piece of the Talon's feed lip, and there's a stopper in the back here to stop darts from getting pushed too far back. And now the main part of the internals. There's a decent bit going on here. As you can see, it's been converted to direct plunger using bits of a rampage. Here is the rampage plunger tube and there's a rampage catch. Similar to what I do with my retalicons, the spring rest is a piece of the original plunger tube with some PVC added. The spring is, I believe, the stock spring from a Icons Element EX6, which is actually pretty beefy. The plunger rod is one from the Tri-Strike, with the middle hollowed out a bit, because I broke the original Rampage one during all the testing I had to do. As you can see, there is a screw going through the slam fire bar that keeps it in regular fire only mode. This was done because I needed to be able to deprime the blaster to avoid dry firing. And this large screw at the back helps to stabilize the actual trigger mechanism so that it can properly release the catch. I had issues with stronger catch springs getting it to release. The breech was originally a rampage breech, but it has had the back end of the breech from the toilet paper skid shot put onto it with pens and glue. Now this area right here is where most of the work went in. The clear and clear green tubes that are nested inside each other here help to guide the dart into the metal barrel and close off the hole left behind from where the dart tooth used to be. It also helps fill in the gap where the tiger dart's large heads were meant to fall into. After those plastic tubes, there is a wide aluminum tube that the pusher seals into. It's wide so that the darts actually feed in very smoothly. That tube in turn feeds into the stock barrel from a Dart Zone Pro Mark II. And at the very end, that Dart Zone Pro Mark II barrel feeds into part of the stock barrel from a Nerf Ruckus ICS-8. That just about sums it up. Those are the internals. They're good enough to hit about 125 to 130 FPS, which is pretty good for what it is. Now that you've gotten a view of the internals, let's go see it fire. All right, first up, we have some Dart Zone Max Half-Link Darts. some worker Gen 3 Plus darts. Okay, final thoughts. This is probably the most frustrating project that I have ever attempted, bar none. I had to step away from this project multiple times because of just how difficult it was to get it to feed. And in the end, it still jams more frequently than I'd like. Don't get me wrong, I'm proud of this thing. But sometimes I wonder if it was really worth the effort. That being said, remember to like, comment, subscribe, check out the merch, and thank you all for watching.